So uh, the last video looked at the 1842 prophecy chart. And before we look at the other prophecy charts, um, I believe it's important to consider another foundation that's cl closely uh, entwined with studying prophecy, and that has to do with recovery and the early recovery movement within the United States. And this occurred both within the uh, Caucasian community, uh, the, those who were slaves, and also within the Native American community. Uh, and this, the, this occurred be, building up to the Millerite time, uh, building up to the time when these prophecy charts became available. So, um, first off, I want to consider the story of Joseph Bates. So I'm going to put, look, put this here so you can take a look at some of the points that are here. Uh, Joseph Bates was a, uh, lived from 1792 to 1872. Um, and um, his autobiography is uh, at the Alan G. White uh, website, uh, and some of this comes from the chapters uh, 19 and 20, but you can also find this on Wikipedia, so I checked both resources just to verify that. So um, he was, um, early in life, went on the ships as, uh, and later on became a ship captain. Ship was a shipping was a prominent uh, source of trade during that time, and at the age of fifteen, he was forced to become a servant, in other words, a slave, uh, by the British. Uh, this had to do something with the British American War, so um, he was uh, a servant or a slave for two and a half years. So he uh, experienced what that was like, and. Um, became very strongly anti-slavery and part of the abolitionist movement, very strongly abolitionist. Uh, I'll come back to that in a minute to discuss it further. But and he also became part of the early temperance movement. He became uh, converted uh, early in life as a result of his experiences on the ships. And then um, he became a part of what was called the Early Temperance Society, founded some of it in um, New Bedford, Massachusetts, places like that. He became abstinent from alcohol uh, in 1824, um, and was a part of the abstinence movement uh, from then on, but uh, there's some, some points that are marked during the year 1828. So uh, he, he also uh, promoted abstinence from alcohol as a ship captain, and uh, this was welcomed by uh, some of the people that he worked with, and it was noted that it was beneficial uh, during a voyage for uh, the only time that alcohol was used to be for medicinal purposes. So... Uh, he also was a strong uh, proponent of health reform with this. Um, there were a lot of health habits that people had back then were, that were really causing early death uh, for a number of people uh, and a lot of serious problems. He was uh, very strong on separation of church and state. And um, then he uh, promoted uh, resting on the seventh-day Sabbath, uh, Saturday, and that was part of what he brought to the Adventist church in the Millerite uh, time period. So um, it's interesting to me that uh, this was uh, the early, an early recovery movement. So um, then I also want to look at um, someone that was came a little bit before him, but also was during his time period. Uh, and that's a man named Handsome Lake. I'm going to show you this. Um, now, this information you can find uh, on the Wikipedia website, or you can look at some of the Native American sites. Uh, they tell a little different story or you know, a few little different details, uh, but for the purposes of what we're talking about, I'm, I want us to just stay focused on what everyone can easily access. So he lived from 1735 to 1815. And he was uh, from the Seneca tribe and became um, a religious leader or a medicine man for the Iroquois. 
Um, and during the time that the uh, people from the Seneca and Iroquois became uh, forced to, to be on a reservation, um, the white settlers promoted a lot of alcohol, brought it in. People became heavily, Native Americans became heavily involved with alcohol on his reservation, and he did too. And so um, he had a, a vision, a prophecy, about what needed to happen to produce reform uh, for his, the Native American people. And this in reform involved abstinence from alcohol. It uh, became a strong part of the longhouse religion. Uh, which uh, you know he began during that time, and the Longhouse religion is for is a religion that's through many of the tribes within the United States and some through Canada. So, um, and so he promoted abstinence from alcohol, moral reforms, and uh, was against spouse abuse, which had become a problem with alcohol use, where it wasn't so much a problem before that. So. These are foundations that were occurring for many people leading up through the Millerite time. And when we're studying prophecy, I think we have to also stay focused on recovery. And what does that mean? And I, you know, that's been a strong part of uh, what's happened for me. Now, I want to point out one other thing that I think is important to realize with this. And this has to do with something called uh, triangular trade. Uh, this is uh, uh, something you can look up on Wikipedia, although for myself, uh, I heard it first called the Bermuda Triangle, uh, having to do with the same concept uh, in uh, one of my old history books, U.S. history books, okay? So what happened with this trade, early on for a number of years uh, that brought the slaves in, that brought a lot of alcohol use in, was that uh, from England to and Europe to Africa, they would bring textiles, rum, and manufactured goods. And then they would use that to purchase slaves and support the slave trade, which went from Africa to the United States and to the West Indies. And by the West Indies, I mean Jamaica, Haiti, uh, Bermuda, all those places. Um, horrendous crimes that occurred w during that time. And then with the slave trade from Europe, uh, from the United States to Europe and England, sugar, tobacco, and cotton were sold. So these things went back and forth, back and forth, feeding on each other. So you could see in this that uh, the addiction to alcohol, rum, the addiction to um, to slaves, to forced sexual interactions that were forced upon the slaves, set, in other words, sexual addiction, uh, it was just rampant and it was destroying um, a lot of lives. Uh, on both sides, regardless of the race. And this was creating the environment leading up to what happened with the Civil War. Uh, and so when you understand this, and you understand what was happening with some of the people like Joseph Bates, and what happened during the with the prophecy charts in, in, during the Millerite time, you can see that it was um, a way to bring people to reform on all of these areas. Um, and it, and there were those who accepted and those who didn't. So uh, for myself, when I'm coming to recovery and I'm studying um, prophecy and I want to be close to God, I come to all these different points in my own life and perspective and how I view people. So uh, as we watch prophecy and who's promoting what they say in the Bible one way or the other, um, are they also promoting recovery? Are they promoting freedom? Are they treating other people? How are they treating other people? How do they view other races, uh, rich and poor or other races? You know, there's, a, there's some things that, uh, that we can see being promoted that tell us what's really in a person's heart. 
whether they quote the Bible or not. So um, having said that,